Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Um, in this video, I wanted to share with you guys my thoughts on Fluval Stratum. So I've been using this for a couple of months now on my plants and it's currently my favorite substrate and I'm going to tell you guys why. So before that, I just wanted to say that you might see me look down quite a bit and that's because I just have my thoughts organized here because I filmed this video earlier that I was all over the place rambling on about random things and it was really bad. So yeah, I just have some of the things I wanted to talk about written down. So let's get on with the video. First, let's talk about what fluval stratum is. So on the package, it says that it's volcanic soil for planted aquariums. And it's really mineral rich because it's technically just compressed soil. So it stimulates strong plant growth, um, promotes neutral to mildly acidic pH, and it's for plants and shrimp. Um, at the back, it just goes into a lot more depth, um, but it's collected from the mineral-rich foothills of the famous Mount Aso volcano in Japan, which is kind of cool. Um, so I'll show you guys a clip of what the substrate looks like, but basically, basically, it's like these little tiny little balls and if you crush it it just turns into like a powdery dust now I'm just making a mess everywhere okay so this is what the substrate inside looks like it's just little black beads and if you take one and you like press it a little bit this one is not crumbling. You see, if you crush it a little bit, it just crumbles apart and turns into like a dusty soil. So I was first introduced to Fugal Stratum a couple of months ago when my sister got a pet fish. Um, we wanted to plant some aquarium plants and that's when we came upon Fugal Stratum. So there was some extra um, after using it on her aquarium, there were some leftovers and so I took it with me and I decided to experiment on my plants. So my two test subjects were, first this Pratiscantia. So back then this plant was literally that big, it had six leaves and um, it had no roots but I just put it in some fluval stratum and it took off and my second test subject was this painted lady over here so this plant would not root at all for me um, I tried water, perlite and sphagnum moss but for some reason the roots just would not grow um, so as a last ditch effort, I threw in some fluval stratum along with um, another, so there were two plants in here, but then they both grew so big that I removed the other one. Um, but yeah, so I threw it in some fluval stratum and you can see all the roots there and also on top right there. And it's doing super well, so much better than I thought. Also, if you're wondering what that is, um, it's just a crystal. Sometimes I like to throw random crystals into my plants. Um, but yeah, so these two plants have both been doing extremely well in Fugal Stratum. And that's why I decided to test it out on some other plants. And they've all, they've all been doing amazing. So two more plants that I wanted to show you are first my Hoya, um, Hoya Polynera. So you might recognize this plant from my Hoya haul last year. 
and it shipped to me with these two big leaves here and this plant struggled so much it refused to grow for the first three months and all of its roots started to rot away um, and then I put him in a prop box because I thought the high humidity might help it acclimate and it started to push out, push out um, quite a few of the new leaves here um, but the roots still wouldn't really grow so back then it had like a couple of healthy roots and the other ones I just chopped off because they were all mushy um, but if you saw my plant chores video like last weekend um, you would have seen me pot him up and if, look at the roots right now like this plant has just taken off and I am so proud because like the roots just didn't do anything for like it's been almost a year and as soon as I planted it inside of here it's just doing so well like look at the little roots they're so like white and furry and fuzzy and yeah um oh and it's also pushing out new growth right there and the second plant i wanted to show you is my hoya um, albo marginata so i also have a crystal right there it's a garnet um so this plant also grew really slowly for me um it took like four months for it to put out the first leaf and then after this leaf came out the other ones came pretty quickly um, but I also potted him up in my last plant tour video and his roots have grown so much since then like it's already growing down into the leka yeah and there's also new growth up here and I'm just and also I don't know if you can see but the roots are literally poking out of the top and just overall, I'm just always so surprised and amazed by how quickly like um, my plants adjust and adapt to Fugal Strata and how well they do after. Like before, like the roots were not really great and they would grow slowly, but after putting them in, they would literally just grow like a weed. I've used many different um, substrates to grow my plants before and I wanted to sort of tell you guys why Fugal Stratum is my favorite right now. So when I started my plant journey um, a few years ago, I of course started with plants in soil, um, but for some reason I always got root rot. Like, I think I would overwater my plants because I only had a few and then I was like, oh my god, I need to care for it every day. So I think I would overwater my plants and they would get root rot. And then I was scared of overwatering them, so I would underwater my plants and then the roots would dry out so much that when I watered again, they would just rot as well. And even now, I don't know why, I just cannot keep plants alive in soil other than my cactuses, but anything else, I just can't keep them alive. Um, and another reason why I don't like to use soil is, so this is a bit controversial, but to me, soil is not reusable. So when you get a bag of soil, and you put a plant, you pot up a plant, when that plant gets root rot, the like bacteria and pathogens that sort of cause the root rot is still in the soil and there's no way for you to boil the soil or like clean it out, you know? So if you plant another plant, in the same soil, especially if it's sort of like a weaker, more fragile plant, like the chance of it getting root rot is really, really high. Um, and also, when I think many of you already know this, but plants need nutrients. Like they're like any living thing, they need a source of food to grow. 
And when you plant plants in soil, once they sort of absorb all the nutrients in the soil, like the soil is pretty much like just spent and there's no nutrients inside. And when you, unless if you replace it, like putting another plant in it, it won't do it any good. So for me personally, especially like I said, how I got root rot all the time, I would just be constantly like dumping away soil and it was such a waste. Um, so that's another reason why I've moved away from soil. <clears throat> My voice is getting scratchy. <laughs> um, um, can you guys tell? Um, anyways, and after I tried hydroponics, um, my plants did so much better and like the care is so much easier and I just enjoyed um, like my plants and taking care of them a lot more. So after soil, I tried LECA and the re and LECA is still great. I still use it for my plants with like big, thick, juicy roots but it's not ideal for smaller plants with like smaller root systems or um, just plants with very fragile and delicate root systems as well. Like my Tritoscantia right here because I'm not sure if you, can, if you guys can even see how tiny the roots are. But when you plant it in Lekka and you like repot it or something, um, the roots will just snap and break and your plant sort of has to rehab and you know grow new roots again so that's another reason why Lekka wasn't the best um, also Lekka like perlite is pretty lightweight so if you had a top heavy plant unless if you planted it really deep in the container it would just be falling left and right like I had to clean up so much and vacuum because of my plants in Lekka and Perlite and another thing is this also applies to Perlite which I'm going to talk about next is that you have to constantly fertilize your plants um, because hydroponics it has no nutrients in it so if you don't fertilize your plants the plants will start pushing out small growth and ultimately die because it just can't continue to grow without a source of nutrients. Um, so next is perlite. So the reason I don't like perlite, I actually have an example right here. So this is my Pilea peppermoides and it doesn't look like perlite because it's covered in algae but you can see it's grown in perlite. So perlite's supposed to be white, but if you leave it out in the sun with fertilizer and all of that and water, you get so much algae buildup that it's literally ridiculous. Like this whole container is just green. And I've tried um, hydrogen peroxide flushes and it removes like most of the algae, but literally a week later it just builds right back up and I've just gotten so tired of it and it's honestly quite a waste of hydrogen peroxide as well so yeah I just stopped doing it like it doesn't seem to be bothering my plant that much and honestly I don't really care anymore and other than this plant um, I transferred all of my other plants into fugal stratum so yeah um, another reason why I don't like perlite is because similar to Lekka, it's so light. In fact, it's even lighter than Lekka. So when you put like a plant in, if it's top heavy or if it has a small root system, it'll just fall right over and leave a mess. And um, the last thing is, I don't know if this is just me or if it happens to everyone, but after um, using perlite on my plants, I've noticed these like tiny little black bugs inside of the perlite. And I'll put an image up here, but 
I have no idea what type of insect it is or how to treat it. If you guys know, please let me know because um, I've used hydrogen peroxide flushes. I've tried neem oil, but nothing seems to get rid of them and they don't seem to be harming my plants at all. Um, but they're just kind of disgusting and gross and I just don't like the thought of having like billions of little bugs inside the plants. Yeah. Um, but the hydrogen peroxide flushes seem to kill most of them, but literally a few days later they're just all back and it's really disgusting. Okay, so moving on. Um, so fluval stratum, I assume is kind of like pawn. I've never actually tried pawn, but it's a really heavy substrate. Like the plants you put in here, once you put in, they will not budge. It's a really heavy substrate, which I like. Um, oh, it's also because it's um, like compressed soil. It kind of reminds me of like warm worm castings where it's like a slow release fertilizer which is really great which means because it means that sometimes if you're lazy and you don't fertilize your plants your plants will be just fine because they have all the nutrients they need in here um, but either way I like to add a little bit of fertilizer because I just think it helps my plants out a lot more especially in the spring and summer when they're actively growing um, and that's basically it. Okay, so here are my final thoughts about fluval stratum. So the one thing I hate about it is that it's really expensive. So this bag was around $40, which is a lot more expensive than soil, perlite, or leca. Um, I will say that because my plants are all in tiny containers, because they're all really small, that this bag will last me a long time. But for people with plants in bigger containers, like six or eight inches, like you would need a lot of substrate and that would be quite an investment. Um, I do have one hack though that you might have seen in my plants. So what I do is I add in a layer of LECA here at the bottom before putting the fluval stratum on top. And that way um, the roots are sort of like, they first grow in the fluval and once they get established, they'll grow down into the LECA. And I just find that this is a really great way to save some of um, your precious fluval stratum. And also, I really like this because you can see like where to water your plant. So I always sort of keep the water level between, like at the spot between where the LECA meets the fluval stratum. Um, yeah, so that's the main negative thing about fluval stratum. But on the pro side, first it's heavy, which is really great for smaller plants on top of windowsills so you won't be knocking them over all the time um, and of course this wouldn't be as ideal for bigger plants because it could be really heavy to carry around. Um, the second thing is that it's self-fertilizing like it's little compressed bits of soil and you don't really need to fertilize it at all and it's great for lazy people like me. <laughs> Um, and third, it's reusable. So it's not as reusable as like LECA where you could literally boil it all the time and reuse it. It's kind of like um, sphagnum moss where you can like sort of reuse it a few times and then it'll slowly break down. So for this, I wouldn't really recommend boiling it. I actually never really tried boiling it. Um, what I do is I just rinse out the fluval and I try not to disturb it too much or else like the little pellets would break apart. And you might notice that after you use it or reuse it a few times that um, the little pellets will start to like break apart and turn into sort of a mud. And 
by then I wouldn't throw it away because it still has a lot of nutrients. Instead, I would use that to water my soil plants or just um, the vegetables that I grow outside in my garden. Um, it just acts as great fertilizer. Um, and it's, if you think about it like that, it's like zero waste because you use it on your plants and once it sort of like decomposes down to a state where you can't use it, you can use it to like fertilize your soil plants or like um, vegetables or fruits that you have growing outside. Um, and last but not least, um, I really like Fluval Stratum because I think it's really pretty. So, like for example, this guy right here. Um, I've had these guys in these containers for quite a while and there are no signs of algae. And even if there were a little bit, like, you really can't see it. And also another thing is, is I really like how the black looks and I think it just makes the plant stand out a lot more and it just makes the plant a lot prettier as well um and yeah that's pretty much it i think this concludes my video thank you guys all for joining me today i hope you guys learned some things about fugal stratum um and don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time bye